to the Wealthy Actor Podcast. I'm Valerie Hubbard, an industry veteran with 25 years dedicated to helping actors navigate the business side of their craft. And I'm James Hallett, a fellow lifelong actor and coach joining Valerie on this journey. Here on The Wealthy Actor, we're diving deep into the stories and insights of actors from all walks of life. We'll be unraveling the threads of success, failures, and everything in between. So if you're ready to embark on a journey beyond the footlights, join us as we sit down with fascinating actors, industry experts, and thought leaders to uncover the secrets of becoming a truly wealthy actor. I'm Valerie Hubbard. And I'm James Hallett. And this is the Wealthy Actor Podcast, where the art of acting meets the business of building a truly prosperous life in the spotlight. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Wealthy Actor Podcast. My name is Valerie Hubbard, and I'm joined by Mr. James Hallett. Hi, James. Nice to see you. You look fantastic. I'm for those who are listening, you can't see, but I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're so happy to be here. We have a really special guest for you today. I'm going to introduce her and uh, and then we'll get into the conversation. Um, okay, so we're going to welcome to the stage Miss Monica LaPera. Uh, Monica was born to Columbia parents, uh, Colombian parents in Miami, Florida. She's an accomplished actress whose journey in the world of entertainment began at an early age. Her passion for acting ignited when she enrolled in children's theater school at just six years old, right in her hometown of Medellin, Colombia. Recognizing her innate talent and unwavering determination, Monica embarked on a path to refine her skills, eventually taking her to the UK. Monica's bre uh, breakthrough moment arrived when she secured the role of Clara Arango in the renowned soap opera Francisco the Math Mathematician. This iconic role marked the beginning of her television career, which includes notable appearances in series like Killing Eve and Borgia. And one more we're going to talk about in a second. Monica's talent extends beyond television as she has also made her mark on the silver screen in the 2016 film Between Two Worlds. She showcased her comedic proudness while sharing the screen with actor Chris Mason. In 2019, Monica ventured into the world of voice acting, lending her voice to the character Gabriella in Thomas and Friends and in the beloved children animated series, The Adventures of Paddington, where she breathed life into the character of Sophia. Um, mm -hmm. And you've been booking a lot of things, but most notably, you have the hijacking of 601 on, on Netflix, which is released April 10th, right? Yes. Yeah. And you're the lead. Oh my gosh. We watched the, we, we showed the, um, trailer so you guys go check out the trailer it's just got released it's going to be amazing we're so yeah excited. it looks it looks fantastic thank you so much wow what an introduction thank you very much for having me and i'm <laughs> happy to say you like the trailer because i'm over the moon <laughs> yeah it's so it's so uh great and i didn't know it was a real story i know it's based on a true story so apparently uh well not apparently in the 70s um hijacking hijack hijacking planes was really a common so so this was a this is a story that is based on true events so it was the longest hijack in the history of latin america um and it started in in colombia so it's it was a, a colombian company and one of the planes got hijacked so that's the story wow yes okay. I'm excited to see it. You know, my um my mother's good friend was on a hijacked plane. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. In the 70s. The 70s. And I know it was super common, and they were all going yeah, very to common. That's why we started all the security stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because before you could go on a plane as if you were going on a bus, like not showing anything. Like, yeah, hi. I mean, I'm going. <laughs> whatever. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Changed. And then what? You also have shot some other things in this year right or the last like you know oh, well so. killing eve did you mention killing eve that i did say killing eve killing eve but like what is like didn't you have something else recent on the bbc yes yeah, so i'm doing now a series that is called locker b i'm currently filming that oh, a new series wow. for bbc and netflix and um, Wait, more airline stuff no more airline another <laughs> tragedy <laughs> but this was like horrible in the 80s um yeah. Um, but yeah, so and but planes, yeah, it's crazy. And and also when I was 18, I did a 
a soap opera in Colombia about a plane as well. It was like our Lost, the version of Lost, Colombian mm -hmm. version of Lost, the series, to a game on a plane. It's just, yeah, it's, it's weird, me and planes. Um, but yeah, so I did Lockerbie, and then last year as well, in November, I did a show trial. I did um, uh, I played a character there for the second season of show trial. So it's been busy. Uh, it's been it's been incredible. Yeah, and hopefully this new series is going to change things as well. So, I think it's so, okay. so yeah. one of the questions, Monica, I've been wanting to ask you yes. is, um, so on, on Killing Eve, yeah. your character, your character was hilarious. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was thinking about it and, and, um, you know, each of us as actors, we have a place where we feel that we shine out, right? Like there's a place that's like, it's our gift. It's our, it's, it's where we really shine out. And I, I'm curious to know for you, because you've done like, you're, you know, you're doing, you're doing the hijacking of, of flight 601 and you've done, you know, some, you know, some other serious things. Yep. Um, do you personally feel that you shine out more in comedy or do you shine out more in dramatic work or how do you, how do you think about that as an actor? Um, I think I love comedy. I haven't done much actually, but I really enjoyed it. And every time I have a character in my hands, I think I tend to go towards comedy. Like I drift towards it. I feel comfortable. Um, I don't know. I think I have the timing or I really enjoy it, um, but I'm very dramatic as well. And the characters I've done the poster um, are dramatic. So, so, but because I love comedy so much, I had a great opportunity in my hands to do to play um, the character in Killing Eve. And, um, and it was a great story that I'm gonna tell you because I love it and I'd love to share it with you. Uh, so I, I auditioned for the part. It was for a couple of scenes in, in episode three. I did that and they absolutely loved what I did. And it was so rewarding and beautiful. So the last day of shooting, the producer comes to me like, Monica, wait, uh, because it was in the middle of COVID. I was traveling to Colombia. Um, I, I was going for a month because going back was, was a nightmare. So I couldn't come straight from Colombia anyway. So he's like, listen, we loved what you did and we would love to invite you, um, to be in one more episode. We would love, we would love you to come back. So it was really incredible because I was very faithful and I just, I just, I just knew very clearly what I wanted to do with the character um, uh, it was a very strong, um, well, I just went for a very strong, um, um, how to say, um, anyway, everything was very clear. Like you said, it was just very over the top and then killing Eve, the tone of killing Eve was completely different to what I did. And I'm like, okay, this is going to work or maybe it's not going to work at all. But I mean, if they like it, I'm going to go for it. And, and they, and it really worked. So I was very pleased, um, I was very pleased with myself and and yeah that's that's a lovely story because I ended up almost auditioning twice for it once when I got it and then I kind of auditioned without knowing for the second episode that I did so it was it was brilliant I mean it's so interesting that, that so it's so interesting that you say that what you're doing was different from the feeling of killing you because my feeling was that Sandra O oh, completely met you where you were <laughs> Yeah. So that so, so that she she was completely with you in yeah. in in what you were bringing. So I actually felt that it fit in totally. Um, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. She's she's incredible. But she did. But the the series wasn't like that. Even though Jodie Comer her character was incredible and over the top and did crazy things, it was this the series was the tone was com was the opposite it was. Huge serious and lugubrious sometimes and it was just different so I was really pleased for them to open uh, to give me this opportunity to just be very Latin and, and spicy and loud and bright and bubbly um, and and yeah they really enjoyed it so it was great I, I love that thing that you said that you said that I wasn't sure it was going to work and so many times we've heard that from people that you know like Melissa McCarthy and Bridesmaids. Like she yeah. said that before her audition. She was like, this is either going to tank 
or it's going to go, right? And so that feeling of like flying by the seat of your pants, you know, and putting something really big out there is always, you know, the best way to go, in my opinion. I completely, it's like, I, for me, it's the only way. Every time I get an audition, I read it, I make my choices. They're usually very strong. And um, and if they work, they do, like in Killing Eve, sometimes they haven't. And a lot of times they haven't, but still it's the, it's the way I see um, a character or a scene, a situation. And I think the best thing to do is commit to your choices and go for it. Because if they work, then it pays off. If not, whatever, you keep trying. But if you do something in the middle and if you get that job, but you still, you didn't even know what you did in the audition, then you're in a very complicated situation because then where do you go if you really if you if you didn't commit from the beginning so i think the only way is just just commit and and yeah go for it and the producers like as you said the producer came to you and you know like they recognized your bravery yeah. and, and this yeah. is that thing right that that our work is all about courage yeah it's all about courage it's it's about courage to take risks it's about courage to make a decision, make a choice to stand up for it, to, um, to tell the truth, to speak our truth, you know, Absolutely. some, you know, even if it's comedic truth, it's still truth. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that place of that courage, uh, I, I think that this is one of those things people recognize courage. Like you, you made a really brave choice. Yeah, exactly. And they responded to it. And, and I think that's so important, you know, God, it's so important to, um, to trust, to trust ourselves, and to believe in ourselves enough that we, um, that we step forward and we take off, take off the mask of, of, um, of fear or the or the you mask know, of of being small, you know. Because it's also the only way that sets us apart from the rest. Is like, if you can really, if you can make a choice, if you can put your the the, the way you see life, um your background like if you can if you can bring yourself as much as possible um to your choices then that's the only thing that's going to set you apart that's the only thing that you're going that people are going to remember you by and um and yeah that is the only thing that's going to make the difference i remember auditioning for because audition i love um the the, the auditions like the subject and the topic to talk about it because we just have them Every day, I mean, if we're lucky, or it's just something that we're encountering in, in, in our careers over and over. Of course, it's, it's all about, it's all about auditions. So when I when I audition for the hijacking of flight six hundred one, um, it was the longest um, audition process. Um, it was it was painful because I really yeah. wanted, it. and it took it took ages for them to make their decision because they were. Um, they, they needed to see everyone, everyone literally in, in many countries. So uh, it, it took a while. Um, but I remember when I auditioned the first time. So I auditioned without the directors. And then they the first callback, um, it was on Zoom. So I sat and I said, listen, and I was super inspired because I had watched um, the Hollywood Reporter, the roundtables, where did you see an actors talk about the process and everything? And I had watched an interview where Jennifer Lawrence was telling like how if she wanted something, if she wanted a character and a project, how far was she, she was willing to go. And um, and then I was very inspired by that conversation. And when I sat with the directors, I started saying, listen, before before I audition, this is going to be for me. We were laughing the other day because they remember very clearly. I'm like, listen, this is going to be for me. I know this is not the way actors should talk to directors. But I have this opportunity with you guys. This is a callback. You like what you saw. And this is me. I'm like this. I'm intense. I'm passionate. And I really want this. And I was watching, I told them, this roundtable interview, blah, 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 where they say that they were willing to go this far to get apart. And I just, and this is how far I'm willing to go. I just, I'm, I'm willing to say to you, I really want this. To happen i'm gonna do my best hopefully it works if not i anyway wanted to say that i love the part that this is incredible what you created uh that i'm really lucky to be to be here they were shocked they were looking 
at each other because it's two of them looking at each other like uh, okay can we do the audition can we can we do the scene <laughs> uh and then i laughed and i did it and they laugh now uh, but uh, and then i i finish it like after an hour and a half and i was so happy i'm if nothing happens after this i was myself i said it uh, of, of course, I was polite and I was respectful, but I, I that's also me. And for me, it's really important that me comes through. Um, and I had the chance. Of course, we don't have that chance always, but I had it. And, and I was really happy that I was brave enough to do it. And well, I think, I guess it paid off. That, I mean, that plus the, the, plus the, 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 the acting, but it all worked. So yeah, I think just be brave and, and go for it. And and yeah, probably they remembered me for that for a while. It's beautiful. That is amazing. <laughs> you know, and I think that, you know, one thing I was talking with about what, with one of my clients today is I read something today in this book that I'm reading about how, you know, we can't be concerned with, are they going to be concerned about it? Are they going to not like me? Are they going to not care for me? Like we, we have to stay over here and say, and do what we feel pulled to do and not be worried about how, because we don't have any control on how they receive that. And we don't have any control. We don't know what they're thinking. We'll never figure that out in a million years. And so when I was reading this in this book today, I was like, oh my God, this is so much something that I deal with, with actors all the time. Right. Like, and so I really heard that that you stayed over here and you did something that you thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, and you were confident about it. And then you didn't feel bad about it. You did it. And that was it. I was, I was being honest with myself. I felt it then. I really felt that I wanted to say that to them. I admired them. I knew their work. So I just said all the things that felt right without thinking this is going to get me the part. I just wanted to be honest and just be me and just tell them that uh that audition meant a lot for me yeah so yeah i you know li li listening to you talk about that I'm, I'm thinking about um when i watch award shows you know and you can watch you can watch the oscars or the you know sag awards or any of those shows and i'm like i get tired of watching them until i see one person take a risk and say something really true and mm -hmm. and speaking you know from their unique self and i think that what you you know what you're saying is so important you know we're all waiting we're all waiting for someone to speak the truth yes yeah and and in that in that interview you said you know you guys called me back i really want this role yeah. you know i'm like you know and and i think that 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 um they they may have seemed shocked for a moment but I think it was probably the shock of you saying the truth yeah, and the speaking out. And it's so important. We, we have to find a way to speak the truth. We have to find a way to speak out um, courageously and, 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 and let it, let it be something. It's like, I, maybe they want me, maybe they don't, but, but what they're going to get is what they're going to get yeah. is the, the truth. Exactly. You know, like, it's so refreshing. Yeah, it's so refreshing. It's so and also why do we have to play? like hard to get as well as actors. Like, yeah, I'm auditioning, but hmm, hmm. Well, no, I'm auditioning because I really want this part and I love it and it's amazing. And you wrote a beautiful uh, character and it would be incredible to do it. I know it's a hundred people behind this decision, but uh, but yeah, I would love to because yeah, sometimes we're like, yeah, the auditions and you go into a room and you're like, yeah, like serious or like, ten well, no, we're there. They are there because they need to find a person. And we're there because we really want to do the job. So it's just great to be honest about it. And then, yeah, act and do your work and, and well. But but if you can be you as well, if you, if you doesn't get lost, um, I think that's ideal. Yes. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Um, okay, so... Um... I kind of want to know um, when you heard the term wealthy actor, because we we think about like James and I think about like wealthy from spiritually, mentally. But, you know, we also think about money sometimes. But when you heard that term, what did that say to you? I've been thinking about it um, for a while now because it's so beautiful. 
and I've been really thinking, yeah, about like the meaning. What what does what does it mean to me? Um, because like you said, like like you said just now, Val, that uh, it the, it can mean very different things um, to everyone. I think I think it's changed um, throughout my life. The meaning now wealth in my life and in my profession is knowing and also now but also looking back without knowing that before um i think for me is knowing where where i really want to get like having a purpose a clear purpose that means how 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 does it translate in every day, like in little things every day. So when I came to London, just to, to, to elaborate a little bit more on that, when I came to London to study when I was 22, I, I left my life in Colombia. I was working, I started working really young and uh, I did TV for many, many years. And I came to London when I was 22 and I said, I need to rest. I need to study something different. I need to, not something different, but something else or like go deeper in, in, in what I love travel, meet new people, but very quick, very, very quickly, I ran out of money. So I had to start working in different things. Um, but, but then I sat down and I said, okay, what can I do that allow me to audition from now on then? And also don't take me away completely from my life, um, but also make me happy, even if it's not acting. And I decided that I wanted to work in Harrods. I love fashion and I love high end, and I can't, I couldn't do waitressing because I'm, I'm clumsy and I, and I don't like, I like partying, but I don't like working at night. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm like, what do I, what can I do? I can work in fashion. That's amazing. I've never seen uh, exotic skins and leathers. Incredible. Anyway, I'm like Harrods. And I went there and it's just a crazy story how I got the job. We can go back to that. But 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 just to answer the wealthy part, um, even though I wasn't doing, I wasn't acting, I was thinking every day, okay, I'm here. I'm a sales assistant. Um, people from Colombia was coming to the shop floor and I had my name on it. And I was, at the time, my the, the biggest soap opera was out. So people were coming to London and they were like, oh, you're the actress. Can we take a picture? What but you're selling here and then my um um my colleagues were like but you're an actress but this famous it was really funny but then for me it was incredible because I was just doing research I'm like hmm, okay this is this is how it works I was everything was helping my career and my motivation I'm like I, I was never distracted um so having a purpose doing even if you have to do 100 things different things nothing to do with your profession you still can be focused you still can be learning and using what you're getting to um, fuel uh, your your aspirations and, and your purpose. Um, and then eventually it will work out. Eventually you're going to end up doing what you really want to do. So if you, so, so yeah, so I think having purpose, waking up and doing, okay, I don't have, I'm not filming today. I'm not working. If I don't have to work in, in, in anything or something, uh, but I'm at home. What do I do today that bring me that that can bring me closer to to what I love, to my profession? So um, so yeah. So I think I try to live my days like that. And for me, that's wealth. That's being wealthy in what I do because that brings me passion, um, purpose, eventually money because I end up doing what I what I what I love. And um, yeah. And I think and I think it's all about that um, now. Just what I really want to do, how to get there, and and yeah, and just living, just living a a life with. It's powerful. Um, there's, I mean, you've said it. You there's a lot you've said there. Um, yeah. One of the things. I mean, I, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I mean, I, I actually would love to know the story of of how you got the job. If if oh that's the story you'd like to tell. Yeah, let's hear it. How'd you get the job at at Arids? That's an amazing story because okay. then, so I came here thinking of I'm a superstar. I did lots of soap. So of course I want to not work, but I want to study, but still, I mean, I did a, a lot of things. So 
Okay, Harrods. Okay, they're going to hire me in a second. First of all, I didn't speak English really when I came. So I didn't speak Spanish for six months. Um, I was talking to my mom, but I didn't want to uh, um, have, have Latin friends, Colombian friends. I didn't want to speak Spanish. I needed to learn English. That's the main reason um, for coming to London. So, but after three months, I've, all my savings for 12 years run out. I didn't have money after three months. So after three months, I'm like, okay, I'm not going back. I love London. I want to live this life, uh, but I need to work. So I decided, okay, hired. So I started going there. So I printed an A4 picture of myself, like from a magazine. And then at the back, I put some credits, but like not, cre not acting credits. Like, okay, I worked for Adidas. I did one event in Adidas in Colombia when I was an actress. So I'm like sales assistant for Adidas. Uh, uh, another event for diesel a sales assistant one day for diesel an event like not lying but lying um <laughs> then like four things like like ridiculous i didn't know how to do it where to go like who to start so i would go i, I at the time i spoke three lines of english uh so i would go to dior i'm like oh my god i love the bags Excuse, hi, can I speak to the manager? Every time I, I I walked into a brand and I liked the things I saw, I, I wanted to work there. Like, okay, the discount, maybe at some point I can get something. I mean, anyway. So uh, can I speak to the manager? So the manager would come, yes. Um, This is my CV. So they would open the CV and they would like, my picture, super inappropriate. You don't put pictures, like there's no need. Like what? So they were looking at me. I'm like, uh, horrible, but... Half of them laughed, half of them closed and like, no, you have to apply online, no picture, this is super inappropriate, what are you doing? You don't come here, everything is online. Uh, Harrods has a super strict process, but half of them, let's say seven, really liked what, this, what they saw. So they called me. And when they start, and Dior was the first, and Dior started calling me, one interview, another interview. And then I'm like, okay, the first interview, it was like two weeks away. What am I going to say? I don't speak English. Really? What? What's I, I mean? So I call a friend of mine. I'm listen. That works in retail. Write a script for me, like write in Spanish, whatever it comes to you, like what the, the questions they might ask. And I translate it. So I paid someone to translate it. And then I had a script, like five pages of script. The history of Dior, Harrods, like you name it. I learned it. A monologue. And then I went to a first interview. Long story short, I passed seven interviews with my script. I never knew what they were asking. Every time they were asking a question, I, I went back to my script. I'm like, mm, maybe they're asking this. I, I, I knew it so well that I could just play around, but it was my script. When I got the job, I called my mom. <laughs> I got the job. How am I going to work there? I don't speak English. I just learned that thing. <laughs> Uh, and then my mom is like, okay, we don't, I don't care. I'm going to sell the car. I'll sell whatever. Go to Berlitz, which is an incredible English school that we loved back then. It's incredible. I'm sure it's still. Uh, go there. Let's pay a one-to-one -one course for a month. And that's it. You're ready. So we did that. My mom sold everything because then we can go back to finances and talk about it as well. And, and I did the course. And after a month, I was a little bit more confident. And then I started working in Harrods, like with my name, heels and selling bags and learning about skins and everything. And um, and and then I learned English working there. That was the best place for me to learn a language. But uh, but yeah, but it was just believing in myself, not caring about anything. Like like you all were saying, like if we start thinking what the others think, yeah. I mean, if I had stopped for a second to think about that, we wouldn't be talking today. Okay, um, but I want to say something else. And yes. this is for everyone that's listening to this. She said, a lot of people closed the book and said, no, that's not the way you do it. You don't do it that way because she broke the rules. She brought a picture and she wrote some stuff on the back. She broke the rules, yeah. right? And she brought that. And most people were like, no, that's not the way you do it. But seven people oh, yeah. liked it. I please hear that everyone that's listening to this 
because when you guys are afraid to break the rules and send something out and not do what everyone else is doing because you've been told you're not supposed to and you did that and that's and seven people liked it i mean that's the best story ever i love that no um prada wanted me no they all wanted me <laughs> <laughs> so and i was a great sales assistant i loved my job um it was incredible also then okay i worked there for a couple of years i left uh i started acting and then i got a really incredible job which was borgia the series um so i went i moved to prague and i lived in prague wow. for six months so after that i'm again i'm the biggest star now mm -hmm. and then in the middle of the job montclair they they the italian brand the jacket the coats uh, they they make coats. Mm -hmm. um, they started calling me. Monica, hi, we're opening a store in London. We found your CV. And I was filming. I'm like, oh, excuse me? No, not anymore. I'm filming now. I can't, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they kept calling me. Finished Borgia, came back to London. And after a while, again, I'm like, well, no. I really need to work again. It's fine. Uh, but then they call. So they called me again. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. Not arrogant, but knowing my worth as well as a sales assistant. Um, so I went there and then I sat with the with the manager, with the big manager, and I said, listen, I'm an actress. I love selling. I love Montclair. Love it. That's why I'm here. Uh, I don't remember when I left the CV there. I must have because, yeah, because I love the brand. I'm going to do, I'm going to sell as much as possible. I'm, I'm reliable and I'm incredible, but I'm an actress. So if I have an audition, I have to go. I only work Monday to Friday because I'm meeting someone and I really like him and I think this is serious and I really want to get to know him. Um, I had like a list of 10 things that I wouldn't negotiate. And he was looking at me shocked and more shocked. I'm like, oh, he couldn't believe it. I'm like, but I'm great. Like, really believe it. I'm going to sell and I'm going to pour my heart into this. But I have a life as well. So, yeah, you tell me. They heard me. So... Again, and I was great. And this is not being arrogant. It's just knowing, and this works for every industry and for our industry, especially. It's like, know what you want, where you want to get. Don't be afraid. And Val, like you say, break the rules, go for it, and then make the difference for, for the others and for yourself. And and yeah, maybe he, he, he could have said no. Okay. But then if he had said no, it would have been perfect because I, 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 I wasn't going to work in something that that um, was not going to give me these options. Um, so that was non-negotiable for me. And that was real. Yeah, that was the truth. So yeah, that, that was another good one as well. And I ended up working in Montclair for another two years. I love and I have friends and, and it was amazing. Um, yeah. But it's just it's just a, an example of. Did you get some bags or some Montclair? Did you get some of this stuff? <laughs> Words, everything. The words. <laughs> I was the worst. These when we times. finally meet in person, I always love like when I finally meet a client in person, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to your house, I'm gonna look at your closet. <laughs> <laughs> I, would love, I would love you to come and show you all my jackets, especially jackets, because we had a lot of discount in Dior. It was really hard, but um, but but yeah, but uh, but jackets, yeah, they were great. Oh, I've been it. watching that show about Dior. I know I haven't. I know I saw it. I yeah, haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. I've been watching Balenciaga, a Spanish one. Um, oh yes, um, a Spanish series, incredible. But yeah, the Dior one I saw the other day. Yeah, amazing. Then I last know. night I got into uh, Quiet on the Set. <laughs> which well, I don't is know the, that. Oh yeah, it's, it's the documentary about sexual harassment at Nickelodeon. Oh oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> I have to watch. So that. that's that <laughs> was like that's my new little. I like documentaries a lot. Yeah, I love documentaries. Yeah. I love documentaries, and but I but I, you know what I love the most nowadays? Love is blind. Let but let's no go there because then this is the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> because then I get too passionate and I can't talk about anything else. But yeah, I love Taylor it. Swift and Travis were talking about love is blind too. There really? is a with it. Yeah. So there, you're in good company. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, go ahead. So, so, so there were there were a bunch of things that you said in that story that are are so powerful 
and that we all need to remember. And and I, I, I want to lift up a couple things, and I'm sure Valerie has a few too. Um, so the, the 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 idea of the idea of putting yourself out there and having half of the people say you can't do this and half say you can, it's really important that that um, I mean, that simple line of half of them said no. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, th th there's there's a, a, a wonderful, uh, there's a salesman who I love following because he's he's one of the greatest salesmen on stage. And um, and he says, he walks in the door and he knows immediately that half of the people in the room will hate him. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, and he doesn't say they, they won't like me. He says, half of the room will hate me. <laughs> and, he, yeah. and he's like, that's not, that's not the half of the room that I'm speaking to. Yep. I'm speaking to the half of the room that loves me, that wants to hear what I have to say. And, yep. and I think that what you described in your story was the courage to be like, you know what? It's okay that half of the, half of the people I'm speaking to don't like what I'm saying. That's okay. Because as, as long as you stayed true to the boundaries, to the yeah. needs, to the desire, to the want that you had, you were able to reach the people who were going to say yes. And, and not to worry, not to worry about the people who are saying, who are saying no, exactly. it's, it's okay. It's okay that there are people who say no, but, um, but your story is so beautiful in, in, in the fact that um, that by being so clear, you quickly, quickly let go of the people who were not going to say yes to the things that you really needed. Yeah, completely. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only way to be in this business as well. I, I grew up being an actress. I, I decided that I wanted to be an actress when I was six. So I guess rejection has always been part of my life. and. Um, and I and I've learned how it's still of course I still struggle of course I think you 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 never you never get used to rejection but you learn how to navigate it and how to live with it and how to not pay attention and how to not take it personally so yeah I knew what the picture thing I knew I, it wasn't the correct way but I also didn't know other way and I needed to start somewhere and I wasn't doing any harm either so it's just okay you don't like it okay but you're liked it and then the and it is not it doesn't work that way well maybe it can't work that way maybe it doesn't have to be only online maybe if I come to you and you see me that helps like wow well like what you say in, in all your um masterminds or your coaching and everything is like just go and show up and see maybe they call you for an audition maybe don't but you have nothing to lose um, and it's the same thing. It's like just go. Maybe you change things. Maybe before they didn't they didn't do it like this or, or only online because nobody had come here and show you a picture in your face. But maybe now that I did, maybe that's the new way, or maybe that can work as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. When I hear uh, that's not the way we do it, or it's not done that way, or you know, one of the forms of that same sentence which we hear a lot in the acting world, like you're not supposed to do it that way. That's not the way we do it, right? Like I I always hear like, that's not the way you do it. Yeah. Um, or the other one is when, when someone says, uh, we never do that, only when you don't, right? Because it was like, you know, well, we never call anyone that emails us. Well, actually that's not true because last week my client emailed you and you called her in and you booked her. So only when you don't. So always like when you hear that, you always, I always say, say to yourself, well, that, you know, that's the way you do it. Because a lot of people that are in powerful positions feel like they're in control of this rule book, this non-existent rule book, right? That this is the way the business is. And these are the rules you have to follow. And if you don't do it that way, you're going to be blacklisted <laughs> or you're going to be in trouble. Right. And so it's so crazy to me. And we hear that so much mm -hmm. as actors that then we stop, we stop listening to ourselves and we only listen to them. Right. And then that becomes our truth, not, you know, because it, 
as a child, we listen to our own truth, mm -hmm. right? But then mm -hmm. as we grow up and we get all these rules, then we start listening to other people's opinions about what we should do. Yeah, completely. Right. And then and then you get lost, your personality, yeah. the, your yeah. essence, your, you get lost. And then, and then nothing, yeah, that's it. And then when you go to a station and when you go to a meeting, there's no you at all. Like nobody can see who you really are because then you you only you're only thinking about what the others think, the 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 way you're supposed to do things, and then yeah, that's why you have to be true to yourself. Like this is my personality. I know I'm bubbly and I'm loud and I'm like what you're hearing um and all these stories. So that's my version, but we all have our versions, and that's and that's how we have to be. We just have to be true to that. Um, that's the only way. Monica, um, what have you learned that you wish that you knew when you were first starting out? I think not take things personally, like pers yeah, personal. That's um, one big thing. Um, this. I say I say this now, but 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 it but it took me a while uh, to come to this conclusion and to feel this way. Like, okay, this is me and unapologetic, and and I'm just gonna be myself. So it took me a while. So I think um, don't listen to others and and just be true to yourself, and um, and also enjoy enjoy the process. I really. I really believe that. And um, this is a career where we think a lot about the future, what is coming, what it should come, what we want to do when we when we are filming with whoever or when we are winning awards. And it's all about the future. But the process is beautiful. Um, when I came to London and I was in Dior and I was studying and I was um, wearing no makeup and with no money at all, like trying to find three jobs in a day. I absolutely love that. Like looking back, I'm like, that's who I am um, now. But I, but sometimes I didn't enjoy it that much. So it's just enjoy every day, enjoy the process, enjoy every day. And, and yeah, just, just enjoy, just, just enjoy the process because it's hard, but it's part of it. And that will ultimately make you who you are the the actor um you'll be for example now this the series I I did that hopefully you you you'll watch I think if I hadn't experienced what I what I what I have and what I did um in my life when I came here I'm a mom so so maternity and I don't know so many things if I if I hadn't done that I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't been able to to get this part it's just it was a lot it was very intense and it, it required everything from me so so yeah so everything I lived helped me to get to where I am now so if I had enjoyed it more probably I mean I would still be here but I would have been happier when I needed to be so yeah just just enjoyed the process that's great and and um you know, and you said something about like, you know, don't take anything personally. You've been learning um, since I've been coaching you about business relationships and not taking those personally. Um, yeah. And so that's, can you talk, I mean, you know, without any, you know, obviously names and yeah. stuff, but like, can you talk a little bit about like what you've learned about being in business relationships? Yeah, it's complicated. It's super important not to take it personally. Because, <laughs> sorry, it's not. It's business. I think, like I just what I just said about going to Montclair and say I have a boyfriend that I want to meet. I do auditions. I don't work late night. I work Monday to Friday. The same way, you have to be um, with your career. I think you have to. Okay, what do I need with an agent, for example? Um, what what am I looking for? What I'm what I wouldn't negotiate. And have everything really clear because when you have that those boundaries, then you'll find the right people or the wrong people will go, and it's fine. It's not personal. It's not them. They might be great, 
But because you're not willing to negotiate loads of things in your life or the ways you see your life, your career, because you're not willing to negotiate that, those people are not the right people for you. Yeah. And they just go and, and and you don't take it personally. But you have to have very clear um, what are your boundaries, what, what are your limits, and and like like I said, the purpose. Where do you want to go? Where, how and where? And if you have, if you're that clear, then it's not personal. You just move on, and you're like, okay, I I finished relationship with agents before in the past, and that's very painful. That's really hard. That's scary because you feel like you're left alone. But because I also know where I want to go, where I want to get, um, and I'm and I'm not willing to negotiate many things then I'm like, you know what? I'm confident it's going to come. The right person is going to come. If not, then I mean, it's, it's because it's not meant to happen. Uh, but it's just, it's just have everything very clear in your life. Where, where you want to see, where you want to get and, and how, and just the right people will come and, and the wrong one will go. It's the same with relationships, I guess, with, I mean, romantic relationships, friendships, um, just, yeah, with, with, with everything in life. I Everyone. think with the relationships often like romantic and friendships, you know, as, as the years go on, a lot of times you have to renegotiate, right. And, and take it, you know, I, I noticed that in my marriage of 37 years that, you know, like there's a new, you know, there's a new negotiation on the table, like, okay, like, we need, you know, because we have a different levels of what's happening, not just in our lives, but in the world right and yeah. uh you know and we change yeah change yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah but it's just being really aware of who we are all the time on like where 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 are we willing to go and um yeah just boundaries really that that makes life easier and you, you know it's you interesting should... because your manager said to me a few years ago she's like you know actors always come in and they don't have expect expectations set for themselves and i wish that they would understand that they need to have that you know so yeah completely mm. so so you you said you have a child yes i have a I, seven year old boy that's fantastic and i um it's also it's really important i think especially for um, for women in the industry to hear stories of successful women who have also had children, because I think it's, it's, um, it can be a, you know, a big question, like, a am I allowed to have a child and still be a professional actor? Am I like, how do I balance that? How do I make it, you know, so, so for you, are, are there any, are there any, um, bits of wisdom that you would say, like, you know, this is what helps, or this is, you know, um, like how how have you handled that and and has there been any difficulty or has it just been part of your your life as as an actor and a and a mother James I'm so happy we we talk about that and you mentioned that because it's very hard for women I'm sure men of course when they're fathers they have to work and it's tricky but for us it's our body as well beginning with that it's like pregnancy you have to stop for a while and then um so so yeah so the whole pregnancy but then you have to breastfeed i mean uh, breastfeed it's just it's just um it it seems like a long time so i also had those questions of course like oh my god my career or or, or being a mom or my family but what if what if what if and you know what you can have it all you can have it all and 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 that's the main thing I would like to say. It's like, why do we have to choose? We can be mothers, we can have a family, and we can be successful in our professions. Because if not, then what's the point of life? What's the point? It's like, we can all work. And yes, of course, you stop nine months, and then maybe three more months. Okay, a year goes like this. Like this. So I wouldn't stop um, doing anything for work, I think. Um, work can wait if uh, if maternity or having a family is something that is really important and it's a priority for for someone I think go for it and then you'll work her out and, and don't sacrifice your profession but just make it work um, and just take your time when you have to take your time but then I I mean in the past I, I well not in the past and now 
I've had, I don't know, two or three years where, where, where I did nothing. I didn't work and, and didn't do anything. And of course, it's like, okay, but if I get pregnant now, but if not, but then, I mean, you can't, you can't stop for a year and nothing will happen. If this is your life, if this is what you are meant to do. If this is something that you've been working forever, it's not going to go away because you have a kid. It, it's not. It's impossible to take that away from you. So we can do everything. We can have it all. Fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. Uh do we have any questions? If you have questions, you guys, can you populate them into the Q&A? Uh, because we have about 10 minutes left and we'll take some questions. Um, oh, I could talk to you all day. I could talk to you all day. It's I know. I it's know going so fast. I, I have so many questions. I, um, <laughs> so I, so I, I, until someone writes a question, I have um, another one. Um, who, who would you most like to work with? Um, writer, director, actor? Like, like what? Who, what's your... Like if you could say like, oh, I dream about working with so and so. Oh my God. Um I would love to work with Andrew Scott. I love Andrew Scott. I have many, 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 many people, but I would just want to say Andrew Scott for now. I've seen him in so many things lately. And he's just so in Fleabag, I absolutely loved him. And then um um All of Us Strangers. I think that's the name of the film, his latest film beautiful and then and then a play here in London he's just an amazing actor and an amazing human being I mean I don't know him but I think I think he is he must be an incredible human being I, I admire him a lot he's incredible <laughs> I'm gonna say Andrew Scott and then I'm gonna say a woman I want to say let me think I'm going to say so many I'm going to say Jessica Chastain I love Jessica Chastain absolutely adore her that doll's house on Broadway. Oh my God. It really? was amazing. I hope they come to London. Yeah, I would love, yeah, it's so good. It's yeah. the and, and you know, when my friends like go see doll's house, I'm like, oh my God. I saw Janet McTeer in doll's house. I've seen like so many doll's house, you know? And I was Me like, too. I don't want to yeah. see that. And then I'm so glad I went. Oh my God. Okay. I hope they come to London. Great. Uh -huh. That you're telling me, I love her. She's amazing. Has um, so I, I the, Andrews also Andrew Scott, <laughs> the, the sexy priest. <laughs> that's how. That's how, you know most people refer to him. You know, and you know, but he um, in love as well. But yeah, so, no, but I, I have, so he's amazing. So wonderfully talented. He's yeah, so honest and so raw. He's very special. He's he's special. Yeah. Um. So we have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, do you, should, should I read one, Val? Yeah. Um, so Anna asks, hi, Monica. Congratulations on all the successes. Um, that's amazing. Are there certain types of roles that you like playing the most? Or is there a dream role you want to play? No. No. Thank you, Anna. Um, no. Um, I think I just connect with humanity. And um, I don't have that dream. I, don't, I love comedy. I would love to do more comedy. That's something that I would like to. But I don't think of a specific character. I just love the idea of um, surprising myself and getting to know a character from zero and just falling in love with a character and getting to know that person and, and just living their lives. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a dream character. I think just human beings. An Do you question. have a dream character, James? Oh, oh you play oh. Vanya. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> a dream character. You know, I I I actually like I liked what um, what Monica just said. Yeah, and I and I feel the same that I um, um, uh, I I, so I I I think actually I'm I'm more of a comedic actor than most people realize, and I and I'm I've played so many serious roles. And and I I I would love to just be cast as wonderfully rich, creative, you know, like deep and profound, funny characters. Like yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's just so much fun. Yeah. Um, yes, for but, sure. Um, I would, I would love to do. That's what I would love to. That this is what I'd love to do. Actually, a romantic comedy, a good romantic comedy. Oh my god, that would be a dream. That's something that I would love to do. So yeah, with Andrew Scott. With Andrew Scott, yes. <laughs> 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 I, 
I mean, so, so, so one, of, one of the questions that comes up a lot, um, and I know that both Valerie and I have encountered this in our, in our specific tracks of, of where we work with people, and, and it's the question of, um, I'm not a native English speaker. Do mm -hmm. I have to change the way I speak um, in order to be successful? And and I and I I know that you've had you've clearly handled it. So so how do you think when you think about that? When you think about yourself as somebody who's from Colombia, you, you know your your native language is Spanish. Um, how, how, what would you say to somebody who's like, I can't get rid of my accent. You know, what do I do? Yeah, my biggest question still is like, is a question that I um well I stopped asking, but I asked I've asked that question for a long time. say I have a super strong accent I I work in London I and I worked constantly really um yes I could I wouldn't go to audition for Downton Abbey but I think nowadays you can really audition for anything I work on my accent I have an accent coach not to get rid of mine I would for example in Spanish I have a super strong accent from Medellin the city I'm from, like the strongest. Every time, more, more every time. My mom comes from, she's like, Monica, but you left Medellin when you were 13. Why do you speak every time more and more paisa? Which is like um, the word we use. The guy, the guy, right. uh, she's like, uh, so anyway, so in English, it's fine. I'm myself. What I work on is trying to be clear uh, to, so, so everyone can understand me, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to get rid of it completely because this is also who I am. So I think you can work you can you can work with your accent. You can work on being on, on being clear. Uh, but just don't lose yourself uh, in trying too hard because then what's the point? Then you start competing with five thousand people like you. Then then I mean then again you get lost. Yeah. Um, an, another question. Um, yep. Can you clarify what expectations you'd put before an agent? Oh. And I guess this can is you like clarify, can you clarify what expectations? Like, like, yeah, I, I what are your are... expectations of an agent? A lot of expectations I have nowadays. I didn't before, but I've been learning. Um, because I'm different. Because I have an accent. Uh, because I'm not from London. So I need someone that really pushes me and that believes in me more than I do. So I want someone that goes out and negotiate and negotiate me, like try to sell me. Like, listen, I have this woman um, in, in the script. The character can be from anywhere. Have a look at this one. Yes, she's Colombian, she's Latin, whatever, but she can work on her accent. She can try to do different things. And still, if she has an accent, it's not specific in the script. So go and see her, see her, see her, see her. I need someone that pushes for me. That's the main, that's the main person and that's the, the main thing I want. Um, I want to create a personal relationship with my agent. Uh, it's important for me to have a coffee every now and then, to meet them, to get to know them, for them to know me, uh, because then it's easier for them to sell me if they know really what kind of person I am. So personal relationship is really important. And um, and also yeah, and I, I and I, it's just all about um, I just want someone that truly believes in me and in what I what I'm capable of, and that is not scared of selling me because I've never been scared in my life. I've had difficult moments in my life thinking like, oh my god, this is hard. Oh my god, no money, no no. I don't see a clear future. Where do where to go? Like it's been it's been hard. But I never stop believing in myself, so I ha I can't have someone that has doubts next to me. Um, that's the main thing, and that changes everything. Because if you have someone that really pushes, then you're gonna have a personal relationship. Then you're gonna have you're gonna see each other often, and then you're gonna have a yeah, just clear and easy communication. That's the main thing. Yeah, I also think that it's important for you knowing you as your coach communication is important for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, because that's also like someone, but I, I think it's interesting because like, you know, so, like someone that says what they, that means what they say and say, says what they mean. Like, you know, like someone that's telling the truth because you're telling the truth yeah, as we talked about before. So, yeah. yeah. 
No communication is key personal relationship. For me, everything is personal. Yeah. It's business. But still, you wanna you wanna get to know the person you're working with. If yeah. we have to finish a relationship, I understand it's a business thing. But until we get there, let's get to know each other because otherwise, how are you gonna sell me? You have no idea who I am. Then I mean, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um so, so yeah, we're, we're, well, we're approaching an hour, so I just wanted to um yeah. just, you know, to, yeah, one one sort of bigger question is um what are, what are your biggest dreams like if you say like, like you you have like w w when you think about yourself in the future what's the what's the big dream so many dreams <laughs> i'm a dreamer um i i i would love to work non-stop that means to stop working when I would like when I want to no when I when no when I don't have a job um I would my so again so dreams yes working non-stop with incredible directors with incredible actors that I admire uh amazing if I win an award every year every now and then <laughs> um great stories yes but really my dream is to like real this is this is real is to live in the present to work on being a better person every day um to i only believe that i only have today and i just want to live my life like that i only have today today has been a success for me we had this incredible conversation that i love that i was thinking about all day um i had an audition today incredible as well I had an interview for my series coming out and that was an, I, today I will put my, my son to bed and that was a success. That's amazing. And then I will go to bed happy. And tomorrow it's another day and I hope to do stuff, watch a film that I want to watch and hopefully an audition. Hopefully I, I'll get, I get called and I have a new job, hopefully, but that's tomorrow. So I don't want to think about tomorrow because I'm always, and, and before I used to live in the future all the time with this career as, as we said before it's really easy to just live in the future and forget about the process so my biggest dreams um are just to live happy today and do things that um make me closer to my profession to make like to to be a better person every day and that's it and then we'll see tomorrow but for now uh this is my dream because it's, it's not easy it's not it sounds like super obvious but it's the most difficult thing to do and um yeah and if I have that, I'll have a happy life. And if I'll have a happy life, I'm sure I'll work a lot. And and yeah, I, I won't stop. But uh, but today is the main thing. Bravo. That's lovely. Bravo. Yeah. All right. So first of all, everyone watch The Hijacking of Flight 601 on Netflix. Please. And I'm going to be watching it. I'm going to be watching it with subtitles because, um, because I want to hear your voice. Because, you know, I don't want to do the crazy dub thing with not your voice. No, no please in no. Spanish, yeah, with subtitles, yeah. I'm gonna watch it with subtitles. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I wanna say that it was a beautiful, blessed day when you came to me as a, as a new client. You are so inspiring and this was so inspiring and you're such a joy to coach. And so I just wanna say, um, I'm so happy we had you here today. It was oh my such God, a great cry. conversation. I'm going to cry too. Oh my God. I love you. Thank I want you to be part of my life forever. So oh my, please, Val, I mean, I didn't have time to say everything I think about you, but you've been, you've been incredible. When I say the process, you have been a huge part of it the past year. It's been life-changing having you and listening to you and everything. You, you're incredible. So thank you so much for, for this. This is an honor to be here. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So we love you. Thank you so much. And I'm, uh, I'm always here. So let me know when you watch, please, fly, uh, The Hijacking of Flight 601. You'll like it, I'm sure. It's it's a, it's a cool show. I'm excited. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Monica. So, thank you, Monica. So, so, so All right, everyone. You. Thank you, James. Thank you so much. You've been All incredible. right. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.